Now, Bumble has been one of the hottest dating apps for quite a few years now. I'm sure you've heard about it. If you haven't, it's essentially the same as all the other dating apps, but the main drawing card, the main difference is that it allows women to make the first move. As in women have to start the conversation, men can't. This was supposed to combat things like creepy messages and men sending dick pics and things like that. But at the end of the day, to me, it is quite similar in nature to pretty much everything else out there. But there definitely are a few key differences compared to the different apps so today is going to be a deep dive into everything Bumble and at the end I'm going to review it and tell you my thoughts. But to get there there is a lot to go through so we're going to dive in every single aspect of Bumble from its photos, from its sign up, through how you actually even use it and also its paid membership levels. Before we get into that, my name is Steve from DudeHack.com and I'm an online dating coach for men. At DudeHack, we help guys up their online dating game. So if that's something that interests you, consider subscribing and checking out DudeHack.com. But today is all about Bumble. So let's dive into exactly how it works and I'll give you my review at the end. So in a nutshell, Bumble allows you to swipe or like another profile. And if that person swipes or likes you back, then a conversation can start. The main difference to other dating apps out there is that women need to start the conversation. If the woman does not start a conversation within that 24 hour period, then that match will disappear and no conversation can be had. Now that is just for a heterosexual matching between a man and a woman. Things do change up a little bit with same genders and whatnot and anyone can start the conversation, but for the sake of today, let's stick on heterosexual conversations. Bumble also introduced some different sides to it, not just dating. It has Bumble Biz and Bumble BFF, which is to help you network and find some business contacts and find friends respectively. I gotta get some fucking friends. And that's pretty much just the basics of how Bumble works, but let's dive a hell of a lot deeper. Buckle up, buttercup. First and foremost though, if you are on these dating apps or you are looking to get started on them, you need to make sure your profile stands out. It's the number one thing. In order to do so, you can take my free quiz down below. You can upload your profile. My team and I will review it and we'll give you some personalized, actionable advice that can get you more matches within a few hours. So the link to take that quiz is down below. Well, that sounds like a good deal. So for us men, Bumble takes a lot of patience. Question I get all the time is, can men start the conversation? And quite simply, no, unless you send something called a compliment, that's, we'll get into that later. But you have to be patient. And unfortunately, a lot of the women that do match with you sometimes aren't even gonna send you an open. So it can be a little bit frustrating at times for guys. And I've even heard and seen it firsthand that sometimes women don't even know that that is how Bumble works. And they're sitting there one wondering why aren't these men messaging me? So if you're a woman and you didn't know that, I really hope you're watching this video and you now know that before not messaging any of the guys. So signing up to this Bumble is pretty straightforward. It's on the App Store, also available on Android, and you can even access it using your web browser. You'll have to make an account signing up using your Facebook or your phone number or your email. Now, once everything is set up, you're going to get onto building out your profile. To edit your profile, you're going to have to go ahead and press this little person icon that's shown at the bottom left corner of your swiping deck and then select complete my profile. Once you have fleshed out your profile a little bit, this section will get changed to edit profile if you wanna add or delete more. Now this is where you can add a few elements to flesh out your profile. I highly suggest filling out all of them. A low effort profile is one of the quickest ways to get minimal matches and giving more of an idea of who you are can only increase your chances. Your Bumble profile will include things like my photos, verification, my interests, profile prompts, my bio, my basics, more about me, my pronouns, languages I know, and connected accounts, which is just Instagram and Spotify. Spotify will allow you to feature some of your top artists, whereas Instagram will display some of your recent Instagram photos. Now, first of all, when it comes to photos, you can select up to six photos to feature on your profile. You can either import them from Facebook, take them right there on the spot, or upload them from your camera roll. Don't take them right then and there, trust me. Bumble's best photo feature is something that uses AI to determine what your most popular photo would be or is after a few swipes have gone through. The My Interest tab is somewhere that you can put some of your favorite activities and interests. This is a great way to allow others to get a little bit of a snapshot of who you are and hopefully show that you do share some stuff in common. There is a wide range of headings from things like creativity to sports, going out or staying in, 
in film and TV, food and drink, and so many other things that lets you get granular about what you're into. Profile prompts, which was recently called My Move Makers, are just talking points that can display a simple question on your profile where you give your answer. Or it might be a conversation starter or the start of a sentence that you need to finish. For example, my personal hell is, or will get on if. Next is my bio. My bio is just a free for all section where you can write whatever you want. And it's just a final little step to show your match a little bit more about yourself. Don't put your Instagram bio in here, guys. Apparently Bumble and a lot of these apps are cracking down on it and shadow banning people that do it. So don't put it in your bio. This is just a nice section that you can introduce yourself a little bit more. Try to keep it fun, light and casual and not go too overboard about who you are. Next, my basics, more about me and pronouns. This is where you can feel free to pop in where you went to school, what you do for work, and this will be displayed on your profile. After this, you get the opportunity to answer a series of really simple questions that just gives a little bit more detail about yourself. So these are things like your political affiliation or your star sign. Also, you can select things like your drinking habits and they usually have a range of answers to choose from. So this one, for example, has socially, frequently, or never. Again, filling all of this out can really help your chances to find someone that you do align with. Now in the pronouns section for Bumble, there are so many things to choose from. There's he, him, she, her, or you can go non-binary and there's so many other options to choose. Next, you can connect your Instagram to it. So if you feel those six photos aren't enough, you can go ahead and easily display your last few Instagram photos. I believe it's nine photos that will show up in a little grid on your profile. And also you can display your Spotify top artists. So this is a really nice way, again, to make that connection with someone on shared interests. Sometimes it is a little bit weird though, and it doesn't actually display artists that I've been listening to a lot recently. But the good news is, is you can kind of select on and off what artists you do want to display on your profile. So you're done filling out your profile now. Now let's get on to what happens when you come across other profiles. Now Bumble works by swiping through profiles and expressing either yes or no. Just under your potential matches main photo, you will see their about me section where you can see all this information. Just make sure that you are definitely swiping up and down and not left to right, because if you do do that, you can accidentally press no or yes, if that's what you didn't want to do. Swiping left to a profile will reject it, whereas swiping right will indicate that you are into them and hope to match with. Now just keep in mind that these profiles that you are seeing will fall under your preferences, which is something that you can set in your date filters. So in the top right of your swiping screen, you'll see a little settings icon. Click on that and that's where you can see date filters. So this will be things like the gender that you're looking for, the age range that you're open to, as well as how far away from your current location you are open to looking for. You can even set what languages they do know. So there's a couple of things to set there, but I suggest leaving it as open as possible. Now, these are the main things that you can actually set filters for, but if you are one of the premium users, which we'll get to in a little bit, you can set extra filters like their height, their smoking habits and things like that. Now, keep in mind that your swipes or your likes are not an infinite resource. You do get a limited number, which does change time to time. So I can't give you a concrete answer on that, but don't be so swipe happy. Make sure that you are only swiping right and liking profiles that really do suit you because you will run out of swipes per day. Plus the algorithm won't like if you're just swiping right on everybody you come across. Now, if you did accidentally swipe left on someone that you did want to swipe right, don't stress. There is a feature called backtrack that allows you to undo that left swipe so you can get a second chance. So we've finished talking about setting up your profile and then going ahead and actually swiping. So now we're going to get onto the good stuff which is actually matching and talking to people. Before we get into that though, just a word from today's sponsor. So just a very short break for today's sponsor and today's sponsor is me. Now the channel was supported 100% by just myself. We don't have any external sponsors. With that being said, I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, which is Hook Her Heart. I've developed this groundbreaking new course which teaches you everything you would need to know about online dating from A to Z. It's called Hook Her Heart, the modern gentleman's guide to attracting, entertaining and retaining high quality women. In my new gen impact five module course, I'll walk you through some of the most vital concepts like how to build a good physique, exactly what to eat, whether you want to lean up or gain some muscle, my methodology for upgrading your look from grooming to a whole wardrobe transformation, a fresh overhaul to an attractive, intriguing dating profile, my exact process for optimizing your pictures to get way more matches, my best openers that get interested responses from women, live breakdowns of magnetic conversations, my core methodologies, and the six pillars of conversation, what to do on the date to give her an amazing experience and the smoothest, most natural way to escalate towards your end goal. Plus so much more inside the course and three awesome bonuses that you'll 
get for free if you sign up before my special introductory price expires. So if you are serious about transforming your dating life and you want to learn literally everything you would ever need to, well then click the link down in the description below so you can get the special introductory price offer that's not gonna be available for long. Now that's it for today's sponsor, back to the video. How do you actually match with people? So if somebody has already swiped right on you and you're swiping through, you swipe right on them, it's going to appear up saying, congratulations, you have a match. Now, as I said at the top of this video, if you're a guy and you're interested in women, if you have matched with this woman, you're going to have to wait until she messages you. If she doesn't, you've got 24 hours until that match expires. So that match while you're waiting is going to go up into something called your match queue, which will be displayed at the top of your messages section. Here you can see everybody that you have matched with that is yet to message you. When they do message you, they are then going to move down into your messages section where it's essentially like an inbox that you can scroll through. Now you might see a section at the top of your screen as well with a little blurred photo. This is called your beeline. You will only be able to access seeing who has liked you if you have a premium membership or you go through and swipe through everybody and you swipe right on them and then it will be a match. Now, something you might notice when you are swiping is when you swipe left on a profile, you might see a little notification coming up saying that you missed a potential match. Just basically means that that person did swipe right on you, but you swiped left on them. So with this knowledge, maybe it's worth reconsidering, but that's up to you. Now, how does the Bumble match queue work? So essentially you'll see those profiles that you have matched with right at the top of your screen. Now around their profile picture, there'll be a little yellow outline that will essentially be the countdown for the 24 hours. When it reaches the last hour, you will see that turn to red. Now remember those blurred profiles I spoke about, that's everyone that's already liked you, but you might notice that little number in front of it, it might have just you know a single digit or it might say something like 50 plus. Now this is a rough indication of the number of people that have liked you. Now this is called the beeline and I know I'm repeating myself a little bit, but remember this is where you can see everyone that's liked you. It will be blurred if you are a free user. If you do upgrade, you will be able to see all these profiles and sort through them a little bit easier. You can sort through them by things like if they're new likes, you can see if they've been using the app recently, or you can see people that are nearby. So it can be a really handy feature if you are traveling quite a lot. But be warned, it does cost money, which we'll get to soon. But let's get onto the messaging now that we've covered off basically everything. So the way that it works is if that woman does then message you, the conversation is essentially opened on up. There's no waiting any more time or anything like that. As a guy, you will be able to have a free for all when it comes to messaging. So yes, the ball is in the woman's court for the first 24 hours, but once she messages you, you can go ahead and message whatever you like. Just a little side tip here, guys. A lot of the time, women will open up a Bumble conversation by just simply saying hi. I personally think the best way to do it is to treat Bumble like any other dating app and treat it like you're starting the conversation with something interesting. Do not just say hi back. Now, something else you might've noticed on Bumble is asking you if you want to extend a match. Now, as I said, you will have only 24 hours waiting for that woman to actually send you a message before it disappears. But you can select something called an extend to make sure that 24 hours is now shifted to 48 hours. So let's just say that you see that little countdown of the yellow circle around their profile picture turn to red. You might wanna go ahead and press extend and now you've got a whole nother 24 hours to wait for her to open the message. Now this can be a good way to make you stand out from everybody else that she's maybe matched with because it will now show your profile picture with a little blue outline. Anything to make you stand out on online dating is always a plus. But just keep in mind you only get one free extend per day, so use it wisely. Next, let's get onto the Bumble conversation. Now look, in order to make things a little bit easier for the ladies starting the conversation, us guys can add something to our profile called a hint. So this is essentially just giving the woman a bit of a conversation starter, an idea to start the conversation with you. So this can be a number of little prompts that you can display when a conversation is started. Could be things like ask about, and you could say like, my house plan collection or something. Next, you can actually video call or voice call. So if text-based chatting isn't really your thing, you can just go ahead and have a phone call or a video chat. It's a great way to verify if your match is definitely real and if you do have that spark when you are actually talking. And these days with AI taking over everything, it can be great to make sure that you're not just chatting to chat GPT and actually a person. Also, sometimes tone does get lost in messages and things like that. So I am a big advocate for jumping on the phone or having a video chat 
usually after chatting for quite a while first. This can also help a lot of people, especially women, feel a little bit more at ease and a bit more comfortable before actually meeting up for a date. Next, you can record video or voice clips. So sending a voice note is something that has been used in lots of apps for a long time now, like WhatsApp. Now, I think voice notes are a great feature and it's something that I always get quite surprised about the response that it gets. Even guys that don't have really deep voices, sometimes it surprises me when the woman they're talking to is like, wow, your voice is so nice. So guys, if you haven't used voice notes, definitely give it a try. I would say not to use every single message as a voice note though, because there are going to be circumstances where a woman can't actually listen to them. I would say it's something to just throw out every now and again sporadically and see the reaction it gets. Next, you can actually send a photo or a GIF. Pretty straightforward. Picture's worth a thousand words, so you might want to throw this out every now and again. GIFs can be a really fun way to have a conversation with online dating, and I've always been a big advocate for them. Again, just use them sparingly, though. It's kind of like emojis. You don't want to throw them on and every single conversation or every message you send, but every now and again to help illustrate something, especially when you're a little bit worried that maybe the tone is going to be lost. You make a bit of a joke or something adding that gift to kind of soften the blow a little bit is always a good way to do it. Okay, we changed up location. I've got my girlfriend in the background, but let's just continue on. So we're up to the question game. Now with the question game, you and your match can both choose a question to answer and your answers will be revealed at the same time. And next you have something called your move and regardless of what gender you are, you will see this next to the conversation if it is your turn to send a message. As in they have sent their last message and they're waiting for your reply. So up until this point, we've been mostly talking about just a heterosexual match when it comes to Bumble, but what about same sex matching? Well, basically, just the whole main drawing card of the lady going first just gets thrown out of the window and essentially it's just like a normal dating app. But the 24 hour countdown will still be there and this is just to give people a little bit of a kick up the bum to make sure that they are messaging and not ghosting someone. So previously we spoke about the profile verification but how does that actually work? So as a reminder, this is just to prove that you are who you say you are. It gives you a little blue tick next to your profile and this can definitely help build that trust with potential matches. Now this works by you uploading a selfie, usually doing some sort of weird gesture with your hand and somebody from Bumble is actually gonna verify that personally. So if that person has any sort of indication that that is a fake photo, your profile will be permanently banned from Bumble. To verify your own profile, click on edit profile and then click on verify your account. You will then be prompted to take a selfie mirroring the image that they are asking of you. And once you do so, you should receive a rejection or confirmation fairly soon. Again, in a world of so many catfish and fake profiles, I highly suggest you do this. Next, you might be wondering how the actual algorithm works for Bumble. Now, Bumble and all dating apps have to figure out a way to actually display the right people in front of you and vice versa. So each have different algorithms, but for the most part, they're fairly similar. Now, after doing this for a long time, I have figured out some things that can hurt the algorithm as well as benefit it. So let's run through some of those now. So pretty obviously the most right swiped users and people that do get the most matches will generally show up first. As I mentioned briefly before, swiping right on everybody will definitely hurt your chances because in the eyes of Bumble, it doesn't look like you're taking it seriously and you're just trigger happy and liking everyone. This can lead to a shadow ban and lead to you seeming basically invisible on the app. If you aren't all that active on Bumble, that will also hurt the algorithm. And your swipe to match ratio definitely affects it. So if you're swiping right on heaps of people and unfortunately they're not swiping back on you, then you will drop down in the rankings. So that's why it's so important that you're only swiping right on people that are really your type and you can imagine you've got a pretty good chance of matching with them back. Next, let's talk about the Bumble B key. If you go to your Bumble app profile, you'll see a small QR code. This is called your B key, but there's not all that information out there about what it actually does. Apparently you scan it so you can access exclusive events and things like that, but personally, I've never used it and I haven't heard too much about it. Now, next let's get onto how paid Bumble works. I've mentioned throughout this video a few times the Bumble memberships. Let's talk about what they actually unlock, how much they cost, and if they're worth it. So on Bumble, there are two different subscription levels. One is called Bumble Boost and the other is Bumble Premium. On top of that, there are features that you can purchase as a one-off, like things called Spotlights and Super Swipes. We'll get to those in a sec. First, let's run through all the features that do come with a Bumble membership. First, unlimited likes. Pretty straightforward. If you do upgrade to one of these memberships, you will ensure that you are never running out of swipes in your day. Next, as I mentioned earlier, the B line, which is all blurred out, won't be anymore, and you can see everybody that has liked you already. Next, the advanced filters. This is restricting your match queue by a bunch of filters, such as their smoking habits and 
and things like that. Next, you've got something called incognito mode. And this is just something that you can select to prevent certain profiles from even viewing your profile before you've swiped right on them. Next is travel mode, just like Tinder Passport. It allows you to appear in another location. Some of those extra one-off features that you can access that I spoke about before, we have super swipes. And this is just putting your swipe a little bit of a notch above a normal one. It comes up with a special icon and essentially it's just saying that you really like that person. You have Spotlight, which is similar to a boost on Tinder or Hinge that you might be familiar with. This is essentially just putting your profile right near other people's swiping deck in your area for a portion of time. And on Bumble, that time is 30 minutes. Now, first, let's run through all the features that are included in Bumble Boost, which is the introductory membership for Bumble. So first, you get unlimited likes, five super swipes per week, one spotlight a week, unlimited extends, unlimited rematches, and unlimited backtracks. Now, for Bumble Premium, which is the notch above the last one, you get access to all those features that we just said, plus a few more. You get to see everyone who's liked you in your beeline. You get those advanced filters. You can have incognito mode and travel mode. Now, nearing towards the end, let's run through the costs associated with these Bumble memberships. Now, just keep in mind, these prices change on so many factors, depending on your location, your age, what time you decide to even look at what memberships are on offer, and they're constantly running different dynamic pricing options. But I can give you a rough indication of what to expect, and keep in mind that these are going to be in US prices. So for Bumble Boost, you can start out at $6.99 a week, $18.99 a month, or $59.99 for six months, which gives you a saving of around about 70%. For Bumble Premium, you can start out at $13.99 a week, $29.99 a month, or $99.99 for six months. Or if you want to, you can splash out for a lifetime of Bumble Premium, and that's gonna be $229.99. But unless you're using Bumble to just constantly have flings for the rest of your life, or maybe you're traveling or something like that, I don't know why you'd pick this option. Now to set up Bumble Boost or Bumble Premium, it'd be quite obvious there will be quite a few prompts throughout the user interface. And that's obviously because Bumble does want you to pay. But if you do need some help, you can just click on edit profile and you will see right at the top of the screen, it does ask you if you want to upgrade. Okay, so since I wrote the script, there's a few things that have changed on Bumble. And this just goes to show these online dating apps are just for ever changing. So by the time you even watch this video, some more things might have changed or names have changed. And yeah, you get the idea. So there is a whole new subscription plan. It's called Premium Plus. And this seems very similar to Hinge and the things that it offers. And they are that you can fast track your likes, stand out every day, and see trending users. So you might've seen already throughout the video, one of those tabs popping up that says trending users. This is for premium plus, And my guess is that it's just showing like top users, kind of like on Hinge, they have standouts. And I guess it's just a way that you can swipe through some of the top swiped users. The standing out every day part is kind of like an ongoing boost. Or for Bumble, remember we called a spotlight. So I guess it's just allowing you to stand out, be at the top of more people swiping deck. And yeah, hopefully you get more matches because of that. And lastly, just having your swipe shot first. Again, I'm just guessing that you are going to appear at the top of somebody's match queue. Now the prices for this seem ridiculous to me. In Australia, it's $50 per week, which is insane. And that's an Australian prices. Check what it is for US, but that's crazy. And one thing in the video, which I didn't mention, which again is different now, is the fact that your beeline is now called interested in you. And again, this is going to show your beeline, everybody that has liked you, but also you're gonna see at the top, any users that have complimented you, which is a feature that's basically allowing someone to send you a quick message before even matching. And you might've noticed again throughout the video in that interested for you tab, that is going to show like a selection of profiles up the top. And my guess here is that Bumble is thinking that these are going to be profiles that kind of just do match you. Now guys, that's basically it for the dating. But remember, we did say that Bumble does have a BFF and Bumble Biz option. Now Bumble Biz is like a networking app. People use it to try to find someone in a similar industry for networking or maybe a business partner. I personally haven't heard too many success stories or people finding really reputable business partners using this. But if you're maybe moved to a new city and you are looking for contacts within your field, can't hurt to try. On top of that, Bumble BFF is a way to just find friends. And look, while I was traveling, I personally didn't use it, but I did hear from some other people that they used it. And some said it was a little bit iffy. Others said that it did result in them making friends. But again, that's up to you to give it a try. If you move to a new city, you're struggling to find friends, 
can't hurt to jump on there and find people that are in a similar boat to you. And lastly, Bumble takes its safety and well-being very seriously. And that's why they've introduced something called a safety and well-being center. To be honest, it's just a section that you can use to access a little bit of information on how to keep safe when talking on the app or when you do actually meet in person. But to be honest, DudeHack probably has much better information on that anyway. So go check out DudeHack.com if you want some more advice on keeping safe on dating app. If you do want to take a bit of a break from Bumble, there's a feature called Snooze, which essentially can just put things on pause, tell your matches that you have been speaking to, that you're taking a little bit of a break, a little bit of time for yourself without completely deleting everything. And very lastly, let's just run through a little bit of information on who actually uses Bumble. So men make up around about 65% of users, which believe it or not is actually like kind of balanced for a dating app. There are 5.5 million users across America and there are 42 million monthly users across the world. 40% of users are aged between 18 and 25 and 55% of users are aged between 26 and 34. So if you're like a little bit older, you're sick of using Tinder, this might be for you. And guys, that wraps it up for the deep dive on Bumble. As far as my review is concerned, I feel like Bumble is very, very similar to Tinder these days. If you want a better dating app, I do suggest Hinge is probably the way to go. Or you can head over to dudehack.com and take our quiz, which will tell you what dating app would suit you and your personality best. On top of that, if you're just getting started out with online dating, I do suggest that you go ahead and take our quiz down below, which will allow you to upload your dating profile and get some personalized feedback from myself and the Dude Hack team. This will make sure you're not wasting any time before jumping on the apps and you're doing your best bet to actually get matches. And if you wanna take things to the complete next level, highly suggest you check out Hook Her Heart, which is an online dating course which will teach you everything you need to know about online dating from setting up an awesome profile to having a good opener to having really good conversations that actually lead to dates. Again, the link for all of this is down in the description below. And that wraps it up for today, guys. If you have liked the video, go ahead and press the thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And until next time, I'll see you later. Say goodbye.